Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Ominde and we continue with the lecture series on the neck and in this video we are going to discuss the anterior triangle of the neck. So what are the boundaries of the anterior triangle of the neck? Remember, you need to go back to the video where we discuss the quadrilateral space of the neck. Okay, and from there you'll understand how we come about the anterior triangle of the neck. So from this we remember the quadrilateral space, we talked of anterior median line anteriorly, the clavicle inferiorly, the anterior border of trapezius posteriorly, and superiorly, it's from the base of the mandible, and the line joining the angle of the mandible to the mastoid and continue to the superior neocal line. So that's our quadrilateral space. And we divided this quadrilateral space into anterior and posterior, and this is divided by the sternocleidomastoid. So anything any part of this quadrilateral space anterior to the anterior margin of sternocleidomastoid muscle is the anterior triangle of the neck. So the boundary of the anterior triangle of the neck medially is the median line anteriorly, posteriorly is the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and superiorly is from um, base of the mandible, angle of mandible, and the line joining it to the mastoid process. So medially, the anterior median plane of the neck, laterally, the sternocleidomastoid, and superiorly the base of mandible and a line joining the angle of the mandible to the mastoid process. Then we divide this anterior triangle into four triangles. So we have the subdivisions into four triangles. We have the submental triangle, digastric triangle, carotid and muscular triangle. And this division is carried out by the digastric muscle and the superior belly of homohyoid. So what do I mean? This is homohyoid muscle. Okay? So, if you're to look at the anterior, it has a superior belly and inferior belly. So, superior belly comes from the hyoid bone. So, this, anything below the hyoid bone, okay, you divide it into two. You have the homohyoid here that will divide anteriorly into muscular triangle and posteriorly, the car or, the, or rather lateral aspect of the carotid triangle. Then, we also have the digastric muscle here. This is the digastric muscle, okay? This is talohyoid, from the stalohyoid process to the hyoid. But you have the digastric here, you have the posterior belly and anterior belly. So between the anterior and posterior belly and the base of the mandible, that's the submandibular triangle. Then between the anterior belly of digastric of the right and the left, that's your submental triangle. And then this is your muscular triangle anterior to the superior belly of homohyoid and posterior to it on the lateral aspect, that's the carotid triangle. So the arterial triangle is divided by digastric belly and superior belly of homohyoid into the four triangles. So again, if you are to look from the anterior aspect, this is the anterior median line dividing into right and left, and you have your quadrilateral spaces. So if you are to look from the anterior, between the two anterior bellies of uh, uh, anterior digastric muscles, you have digastric on the right and digastric on the left. So between the two anterior bellies, that's your submental triangle. Then between anterior and posterior belly, that's your submandibular triangle. Between anterior and posterior belly, that's your submandibular triangle on the other side. Then the midline is here, but you have homohyoid, superior belly of homohyoid, that will divide this anterior triangle into the muscular portion and the carotid triangle. Remember, anterior triangle is from the midline then anterior border of sternocleidomastoid as you go superiorly. So you have your submental, submandibular, carotid, and muscular triangle. Remember, there's a midline here. Then this just shows you the triangle between anterior and posterior belly of digastric. So all this here is a submandibular triangle. And then between anterior belly of digastric on one side and the other, so this space here will be your um, submental triangle. But this image is just here to show you suprahyoid muscles. These are muscles located above the hyoid bone, such as stylohyoid from the stylo process to the hyoid. Then you have digastric muscle with anterior and posterior belly. Then you have the genial hyoid muscle from the genio of the mandible to the hyoid bone. And you also have mylohyoid muscle from myeloid line of the mandible to the median raphe. So those are the suprahyoid muscles. Suprahyoid muscles um, are found on the anterior aspects of the neck. Okay, so digastric 
has two bellies, anterior belly and posterior belly, and digastric muscles are innervated by anterior belly by nerve to mylohyoid and posterior belly innervated by facial nerve. Why? Because anterior belly comes from first pharyngeal arc, which is innervated by mandibular division of trigeminal, and the posterior belly is, comes from the second pharyngeal arch, and facial nerve is, is the nerve of the uh, um, derivatives of second arc. Then we have stylohyoid from styloid process to the hyoid bone is innervated by facial nerve. Mylohyoid from mylohyoid line of mandible to the hyoid bone innervated by nerve to mylohyoid. This is from mandibular. And then geniohyoid from the genu or rather the mental spine of the mandible to the hyoid bone innervated by C1, fast cervical nerve that hitchhikes onto the hypoglossal nerve to get to the um, the muscle. So those four are the suprahyoid muscles. You can be asked to write an essay on the suprahyoid muscles. So we now go to the submental triangle. Submen what are the boundaries of the submental triangle? This is your submental triangle here. So on both sides, you have anterior belly of the right and left digastric. Then the base is by the body of hyoid bone. The apex is formed by the chin. This is the chin. So the apex is at the chin. The base is the body of hyoid. And the sides, you have the anterior belly of the digastric muscles. The floor is formed by mylohyoid muscle here. This is mylohyoid. What are the contents of this submental triangle? You have submental lymph nodes and small veins that usually unite to form the anterior jugular vein. Submental lymph nodes and small veins that unite to form the anterior jugular vein. Before I forget, you will be asked to write an essay on the hyoid bone or in your viva, you should be able to identify hyoid bone, name the parts, explain the different embryonic origins of the different parts. So as you do your revision, get a page in your notebook and write an essay on the, on the hyoid bone. Okay. Then we go to the submandibular triangle. Submandibular triangle, what are the boundaries? So if you look here, this, this is your submandibular triangle from the inferior margin of the mandible here, posterior belly of digastric and anterior belly of digastric on one side. So the boundaries are formed by anterior and posterior belly of digastric muscle and the lower border of the body of the mandible. There's something you're supposed to pick from this table that discusses the digastric muscles. The insertion of these digastric muscles is on an intermediate tendon that is held by a pulley to the hyoid bone. And this is the intermediate tendon here that holds intermediate tendon, tendon between anterior and posterior belly that is held onto the body of hyoid bone. So the submandibular triangle is formed between the two bellies of digastric and the lower border of uh, the body of mandible. And it's usually covered by the skin. All these um, triangles the roof is formed by skin, superficial fascia, and deep fascia. And in this case, you have the investing fascia and the platysma. Okay. Then the floor is formed by mylohyoid. Then you also have hyoglossus muscle from the hyoid to the tongue. So hyoglossus muscle, mylohyoid is here from the uh, myeloid uh, raffi to the hyoid bone. And then you also have the middle constrictor of the pharynx. So those form the floor. Of the submandibular triangle. What are the contents of submandibular triangle? I usually tell the students from the word submandibular. So submandibular gland, submandibular lymph nodes, submandibular ganglion. Okay. So submandibular gland, as you can see it here. Then you have submandibular lymph nodes, submandibular ganglion. There is facial artery and vein, hypoglossal nerve, lingual neurovascular structures. Okay. So those are the contents of the submandibular triangle, submandibular gland, submandibular lymph node, submandibular ganglion, facial artery and vein, hypoglossal nerve, which is the 12th cranial nerve. Then you have the lingual artery, vein, and nerve. So remember, lingual and facial artery come from external carotid artery. Then we go to the carotid triangle. What are the boundaries? This is the carotid triangle. So anterior superiorly is the posterior belly of digastric. Anterior inferiorly is the superior belly of omohyoid and posteriorly is the anterior border of tanocleidomastoid muscle. So those are the boundaries of the carotid triangle. The roof, like any other triangle, is formed by skin, superficial fascia, and deep fascia, and in this case, it's the investing fascia. 
The flow is formed by thyrohyoid muscle, hyoglossus, the middle and inferior constrictors of the pharynx, thyrohyoid from thyrocartilage to hyoid bone, hyoglossus from hyoid bone to the tongue. Then you also have the middle and inferior constrictors of the pharynx. What are the contents of the carotid triangle? So we have the main contents. Um, you remember there's the carotid sheath, and we said the contents of the carotid sheath are the common carotid artery and its branches, external and internal carotid, and their associated sympathetic plexus. Then we also have internal jugular vein and vagus nerve. So you can uh, name them like that, or you can divide the contents. For example, you start with the arteries. You have common carotid artery with the branches, internal carotid and external carotid. And remember, the, um, at the bifurcation of common carotid, there is a carotid sinus and a carotid body. And these help to, uh, they, are, they serve as chemoreceptors and baroreceptor. Carotid sinus is baroreceptor and carotid body is a chemoreceptor. So you have internal carotid and external carotid and the branches of external carotid are actually given off, some are given off within the carotid triangle. So what are the anterior branches of external carotid? You have superior thyroid artery, lingual artery, and facial artery. Superior thyroid that goes to the thyroid gland, lingual artery going to the tongue, and facial artery that will go to the face. Those are branches of external carotid that are going anteriorly. Then we have branches that from will leave external carotid and go posteriorly. So we have occipital artery and posterior auricular going behind the ear. Occipital artery going towards the occipital bone. Then medial branches, they will go medially, so like ascending pharyngeal that will go to supply the pharynx. Then the terminal branches of external carotid are superficial, temporal, and maxillary artery. Okay? So this just shows you common carotid artery within the carotid triangle, then it bifurcates. Internal carotid is posteriorly, it will enter the cranium through carotid canal, and this is the external carotid. So external carotid has anterior branches. This is superior thyroid to the thyroid gland. This is your uh, lingual, and then there's facial. Those are anterior branches. Then medially, that will pierce, that will be your ascending pharyngeal, that goes to the pharynx, and then posteriorly, we talked of occipital, that will go to the occipital region and posterior auricular behind the ear. And the terminal branches of external carotid, we talked of superficial temporal and maxillary artery. Again, anterior branches, superior thyroid to thyroid, lingual to the tongue, facial towards the face. Then um, posterior branches, you have occipital and posterior auricular. Medial branch, you have ascending pharyngeal. And external carotid terminates as superficial temporal to the scalp and maxillary artery so before i forget for all these arteries you can be asked to write an essay about them and remember how to write an essay on an artery you need to mention the origin the course the termination branches and distribution and some of these arteries have parts like maxillary artery has three parts and almost um, 15 branches and you need to know all of them and what they supply so for this all these arteries you need to know what they supply how they cause, okay? So other um, contents of the carotid triangle, we have the veins such as internal jugular vein, common facial vein, pharyngeal vein, and lingual vein. So this is uh, facial artery, uh, facial vein, and lingual vein, okay? This is facial vein here. Then you'll have lingual vein, and then this is your internal jugular vein. So this come to empty into the internal jugular vein. So internal jugular vein, common facial vein, pharyngeal vein, and lingual vein. These are the veins in the carotid triangle. Then we also have nerves in the carotid triangle. We have vagus nerve and its superior laryngeal nerve. Remember, superior laryngeal divides into internal and external laryngeal. We also have spinal accessory nerve, hypoglossal nerve, sympathetic chain. So generally, we have the carotid sheath and its contents in the carotid triangle. Which lymph nodes are in the carotid triangle? The jugulodigastric and jugulohomohyoid lymph nodes. So those are the contents of carotid triangle. Arteries, veins, nerves, lymph nodes. Okay? So this just shows you the accessory, spinal accessory, internal carotid, internal jugular. Okay? You have your internal jugular here. So those are the contents. Common carotid external carotid, internal carotid, going intracranially through the carotid canal, okay? So here you're able to appreciate the hypoglossal nerve, and this shows you the 
accessory nerve coming to innervate the cell.